Well, I have to say that before I came here tonight, I drove to Harrisburg wrongly, and I thought maybe I don't want to tell the story. But after the other depressive told her story, I thought silence only feeds shame. So it starts with a woman, guess. Um, let's call her Morgan Le Fay, who I had a terminus with in one August and was still suffering from when a colleague of mine, probably had a little crush on me, invited me to dinner to talk about things and just, you know, be friendly. We had dinner, we drank a bottle of wine. After dinner, she says, you wouldn't have a wee bit of scotch, would you? So I, of course, said, well, sure, I'd love to do that. Well, we were talking, and I probably had two or three more fingers of scotch than I should have. But the one thing I do remember her saying is that she'd known a lot about Morgan than I thought she did. In fact, before she even met me, someone had told her that I really had it bad for Morgan. No, really bad. No, really, really bad. So I was probably a little bit few sheets to win. It was a weeknight. It was a Tuesday night. I had to teach Tuesday and Friday yet, 9 o'clock at night or so, so I needed to get home. So she follows me out to my car, and she says, you want to stay over? And I kind of thought, not really with you, you know. I better get going. I live 10 minutes away. I thought, no big deal. I get two blocks from my house when I hear the sirens and hear the loudspeaker. And I get pulled over. I open my window. And I can smell the whiskey. And I can hear my voice saying, officer, I only live a couple blocks from here. But that wasn't quite good enough to stop them. So they put me in cuffs, took me down to the Mount Joy station, where I sat for about two or two and a half hours. I think they're actually being nice to me because I was really pretty upset, pretty ashamed, pretty humiliated. Now, that's not the skull in the closet. Lots of people get DUIs. But it was this. I think maybe to elicit their sympathy, or maybe because I really was worried, I said, I have some guns in my house that maybe you should take from me. They followed me to my house, three squad cars, lights blaring in my dinky little neighborhood. And they go in and I, I give them the guns. And then there's these three cops still wandering on my house. It's like, you have my guns. The guy takes my Turkish knife off the wall. It's dull, but he pulls it out. And the guy takes my son's um, fake swords. And I'm going, what, what are you doing? If I really wanted to kill myself, I could use a steak knife or a bottle of aspirin. Mistake. At that point, there's three cops in the front yard deciding that I threatened suicide. Therefore, I was a 302 involuntary commitment. During the drive to Lancaster General, the poor cop I was with, 30 years old, unmarried, told me this whole long and sad story about how life just hadn't turned out for him like he thought it. I mean, he's more depressed than I was. <laughs> but then I get to the hospital, get in my, you know, like blue pajamas, wait around for a long time, and they finally put me in the psych ward. Psych ward. It's 55 degrees in the psych ward. There's nobody there to talk to me. I'm entirely by myself except for the clerk. This is like something out of Kafka. This is just scary and weird. I can't sleep, I'm jittery, I can't get up, and it's just so cold. It's just it's chilly. And I'm deeply ashamed of the whole evening, this whole ordeal. Almost as chilling as when a good friend of mine said a few months later, she will come back to you. <laughs> 